This is Dr. Mirzai and I'm going to be presenting uh, an implant placement to replace a tooth that has been broken off to the gum line. As you can see from this x-ray, a big part of the tooth is missing and traditionally we would try and save this compromised situation by building a tooth back up and placing a crown but there's very little tooth structure left and uh, what's best in this situation to actually remove the root and place an implant and we're going to do this all in three dimension. First what we're going to do is uh, instead of this conventional x-ray I'm going to take an x-ray of the patient's jaw. This is in the upper left area and the primary concern for placing an implant into the upper jaw is you don't want to be anywhere near the sinus. So here's the missing tooth as you can see where the arrow is and uh, on the right side you see the patient's skull. You can spin it around and uh, completely see exactly where the sinus is and uh, avoid any important structures like adjacent teeth and designing this in 3D gives you an incredible advantage. You can actually see where you're going with the implant placement. So let's focus in on the area where the tooth is that's missing. Here you can see how the root of the tooth is embedded in bone. Uh, in, the f in the middle screen you'll get a good view now as we go across in cross section. That white line that you see in the middle of the picture is the root canal treatment that this tooth had. Now we have enough bone there uh, in terms of thickness and we have enough height. Now I'm going to digitally design my implant. I'm going to take an implant and I'm going to place it right into the area where that missing tooth is. And first I place it on the big general view uh, in between the teeth and then I'm going to come in and fine tune it and rotate it and position it to where I want. Obviously I can't have an implant come out of the bone. The implant has to be completely buried into the bone. It can't touch the sinus and it can't touch, uh, it can't perforate or punch a hole through the bone. It has to be completely encased in bone. So by being able to virtually see this in three dimensions I can move it around and orient it to the proper alignment and after I extract that tooth or pull the tooth, I can follow that up by placing the implant. And what's incredible about this is I'm going to fabricate a surgical stent that lets me deliver this implant to the exact same position I'm designing it now. So it takes a few minutes to plot this carefully. In the far left window, you'll see I'm close to the adjacent teeth. So I'll rotate it and I'll walk across the implant completely to make sure that one, I'm not touching the neighboring teeth, and two, I'm as uh, clear away from the sinus as possible to give me the best prognosis and the best placement for this implant. It used to be conventionally you would uh, start placing the implant, you would take sequential x-rays just to make sure you're on the right path, but now we get to design the implants uh, before we even numb the patient. I've got it designed to exactly where I want it to go, and then I have this surgical stent fabricated. When the patient comes back, the very next appointment, we can actually numb the patient, take out the broken down tooth, and place the implant uh, like I just designed in this three dimension. So we have complete control. Within fractions of a millimeter, I can control where I want my implant to be. And once I'm satisfied with that, uh, we'll proceed to the next step, which is the surgery itself. So the patient comes in and uh, placing the implant is actually quite painless. There are no nerve endings in the patient's bone. As soon as the gums are numbed, it's pretty straightforward to do. Here you can see the tooth that was broken down. I'm going to gently remove the tooth. I'm going to make sure I don't do any damage to the teeth next to it. The patient's completely comfortable. They uh, don't feel a thing because they're adequately numbed. So there's the remaining root that was taken out. And here's a surgical stent I would mention earlier. There's a little sleeve in there and this surgical stent sits perfectly on the patient's upper jaw and then that sleeve is exactly where I place it. And I follow the drills in the sequence um, and that stent uh, guides me in terms of where I exactly want the implant to go. So as soon as I've created a space for the implant, I'll go ahead and load the implant into the site and we'll use this thing called a driver to uh, place it down flush to where you want it to go. So here you see the implant. It was placed exactly where I had designed it. I put what's called an abutment on top or a post. And now what I did is uh, as soon as we're done with the placement of the implant, I put that post in and I scanned it with my CIRAC uh, CAD CAM device. I scanned this patient's uh, uh, tooth in the patient's mouth. I designed a quick crown and here is a one week uh, post-op, which means a week after we place the surgery. Uh, we have a temporary crown on here and the sole purpose of this temporary crown is to keep the gum tissue nice and healthy. So this is a very nice result. We're extremely pleased with how we're able to maintain the gums to where we want it to. And we're going to let this patient heal, let the bone fuse into the implant and after that's been done uh, we'll take off this temporary and put in her final crown. So this was 
a very predictable, very easy way of making sure that uh, I place the implant exactly where I want it and uh, we don't uh, risk any damage to the adjacent teeth or the sinus. A great success.